There's literally no end to the fun places you can find to explore while you RV around this country of ours. Today's quick stop is Washington's Tri-Cities, Kennewick, Pasco, and Richland. This area abounds in outdoor activities, history, and interesting things to see and do. For example, there's this big guy up here behind me, the Lighthouse on the River. The Lighthouse is fairly new, built in 2010, as part of the Clover Island redevelopment and a functional lighthouse to aid marine navigation. It's a good place to start your Tri-Cities exploration. The Convention and Visitor Bureau is, of course, the best place to gather information on local attractions. So the Tri-Cities is a wonderful place for RVers to come and visit, particularly if you're into outdoor adventure. So we're sitting at the confluence of the Snake and Columbia Rivers. The Yakima River comes into the Columbia here, so our waterways are rich. We have 23 miles worth of paved trail that goes around our community along the Columbia River. It's called the Sacagawea Heritage Trail. So whether you're a runner or a walker, you like to ride bicycles, it's perfect. Great banks for fishing. If you want to get out in the river, you can rent paddle boards here and kayaks. Uh, good opportunity there, jet skis as well. We even have a river boat. Um, you can get out on uh, water to wine cruises and enjoy a great meal and enjoy some, some wine. The, the RV spaces around our community, we have a number of different spaces. KOAs, for instance, we have state parks down along the Snake River. There's multiple places to park down there, camp and fire up a grill and enjoy it. And then here within the Tri-Cities proper, uh, we have some campgrounds with great amenities, everything from swimming to general stores uh, to playgrounds to, to nicely landscaped uh, areas. So I think there's probably a little bit of something in there for everyone to enjoy uh, and from the RV lens. All around this part of the country, you see boulders like this strewn all over the landscape, looking like they don't belong there. They're just sticking up out of the middle of nowhere. In fact, they're visitors. Back when the last glaciers covered this area and the last floods were shaping the, the basins up here, um, these guys came down with the, the glacier or the floods, hung around a little while, the glaciers went away, the floods disappeared, and these were deposited, and they're called erratics. This one, for example, is made out of granite, which is definitely not one of the local stones. He probably came from, uh, oh, somewhere up in Montana, I suppose. So this is just one of the interesting features that you can learn about here at the Reach Museum in Kennewick, Washington. Natural history, Native American, and industrial history are all specialties here at the Reach Museum. So the Reach Museum, uh, we've been open five years now, We're having our fifth anniversary this year. Um, it really tells the stories of uh, the Mid-Columbia Basin and all the stories that we tell here are tied together by the Columbia River itself. Hanford history is a big part of the story of the Tri-Cities area, and starting with World War II, uh, but going all the way up through the present as we talk about um, the Cold War and also the cleanup efforts at Hanford since the Cold War has ended. Um, our, one of our galleries also gives a lot of information about the geologic past, all the way back to um, the lava flows uh, 17 million years ago, the, um, the history of the river, uh, which has been around for millions of years, the fossils you can find in the Ringgold Formation um, just across the river here at White Bluffs, and then also the, the peoples who have lived here for thousands and thousands of years, um, the plants and animals, uh, wildlife that you'll see here throughout the year, and then just the story of uh, the Hanford Reach, uh, the longest stretch of the Columbia River that's undammed, stretching from McNary Dam to Priest Rapids Dam, nearly 60 river miles, and the efforts that have been, um, that have gone on to help preserve that as a, a national monument. The Reach Museum is a fascinating place to get caught up on the local history and geography and so on. But while traveling by on the road on the way to the museum, we couldn't help but notice this place, Kino's Restaurant and Sports Bar, which is also the home of Rattlestick Mountain Brewing. This is the Hickory Smoke Porter, one of a handful they have on draft at any given time. Hmm. For fans of dark beer, this one will hit the spot. So if you're in the Tri-Cities area and you're down by the Reach Museum and you got a bit of a thirst or you're hungry for something to eat, stop in. Kino's Restaurant and Sports Bar and Rattlesnake Mountain Brewing. Good stuff.
When you're ready to hunker down, there are top-notch campgrounds in the area, including Columbia Sun RV Resort. Uh, welcome to Columbia Sun RV Resort. We're uh, 145 sites on 25 acres. We have full hookups. We have 20, 30, and 50 amp at each site, um, water, sewer. 75 sites are pull through. We have large sites, uh, very easy access for any rig, both large and small. We have a pool, outdoor pool and spa, uh, heated. Uh, we've got a 30,000 or 3,000 square foot event center, adult fitness, and a kids playroom. We also have outdoor uh, sports court and and kids playground equipment. On the holidays like Memorial Day and 4th of July and Labor Day, we do uh, barbecues for all of our guests. Columbia Sun has something for every RVer here in the Tri-Cities, both large and small. For more information about Washington's Tri-Cities area, log on to our website at rollingontv.com.